Our next speaker also belongs to a club of mine and is a significant other too, who keeps our technology running. The speaker is Deanne Gunnerman. Speech title, Fine Line, Fine Line. Deanne Gunnerman. My father, George Shutt. Equal parts inventor and instigator. He was bold, fearless, resourceful. They say there's a fine line between genius and insanity. I always said he had one foot on either side of that line. He was rarely raised by his parents, born in 1930, kind of shifted back and forth between the grandparents and working with the uncle on a farm much of his early years. But from the time he could read, he got popular mechanics and he would read it cover to cover as his extracurricular education. He spent years working on the farm, including not only operating the heavy equipment, even as a very young child, but also helping to, you know, tinker with things and just kind of get his hands sturdy. There were even some of his te early teen years and even preteen years where he became responsible for taking care of his paternal grandfather as he, his health had failed. In junior high, near the end of World War II, he was already teaching woodshop to the other kids when the teacher fell ill and there was a teacher shortage at that time. And so they asked him to teach the rest of the classes. So for part of a year, he became a teacher. His overall education, he finished in 10 and a half years as he skipped through a little faster. He had big dreams and aspirations, maybe something in management. So he started into a management trainee program at SS Kresge Variety Store. I believe they're the ones that later owned Kmart. Then he soon turned his attention to his dream girl that was working at the store. Now, of course, they weren't supposed to date coworkers, but he found out about Yvonne and he introduced himself by coming up with his box of Christmas cards that had his name custom printed on them. And he said, hello, Yvonne. Next year, these will have both of our names. She was a little taken aback this is before stalkers were much of a thing, but he definitely was persistent. Her brothers finally met him and convinced her, maybe you should give this guy a shot. And you know what? The next year, it was both of their names, <laughs> Christmas cards. And at that point, several months after they got married, he got fired from that management training program because they found out he was fraternizing with a coworker. He'd already married her. That started his rebel phase, I think. He then turned his attention to getting into careers that would use his hands and his machining skills and so forth. And so he you know, convinced my mom that he could just forge out, do different things. They were gonna be just fine. Now, by the way, my mom was four hours older than my dad. I think it's about the only time she really had any kind of one up and saw on him. They were both born on February 18th, 1930. So he decided to get into machining, but he didn't actually have any experience unless you counted a little bit in wood shop. And I don't think that counted for much when it came to metal machining. So he lied like a dog. And first he got into an entry level position. And then a journeyman spot became available. Now, a journeyman is somebody with a vast amount of experience and knowledge and, and has gone through many steps. Well, apparently popular mechanics helped him to ace the interview, and they had no clue that he did not have that level of experience. Six months in, there was a very simple term that any machinist, let alone a journeyman, should know, and they discovered he didn't have the background. They didn't fire him. Six months in, he had already done so many things that the other machinists said were impossible. In fact, they used to kind of make a, a game of 
you know, hey, give it, give it to George. He won't know that it's really difficult to do what this customer wants. These customers don't know what they're talking about. And they'd come back and it was done. They met the customer expectations just fine because his brain was totally unfettered. He didn't have come up in the confines and the education of what you did through the classic schooling method. His was reading, absorbing, observing, and trying things, and it worked. His early projects, X-15 test plane, Gemini space capsule reentry system, the S-71 spy plane, many different projects. But he kind of got tired of always being put in a box. And, you know, if you put my dad in a box, somebody's going to get hurt, and it's probably not going to be him. So he decided to go on his own. And because he was so accustomed to others getting the credit for his work because he was not a degreed engineer. That's how his business model, he would get paid by companies and engineers that could not meet their customer expectation. He would do the work behind the scenes. They would get the credit. He would get the money. His first three months in business, he'd earned more than he had earned the prior year. So he was off and running. During that time, he became a full-time father because he worked at our house. So my brother and I really benefited from that far more you know, than our older two sisters. He never missed an event. He was always with us and just being part of our life. He became the inventor of the first arthroscopy tools for the microscopic knee surgeries. Through a counter, my brother saying, telling the, the guy who knew about this doctor, hey, my dad can do that. And he goes, no, I'm, I'm serious. My dad can do that. Later in his life, he really got into being a rebel and fighting the 55 speed limit. He became the, the hero to the truckers. He was constantly on the radio fighting against radar and the 55 speed limit. And at one point as a young adult, I was driving a car and I definitely did something illegal. And when they saw the shut medical name on the company car registration, the officer said, I do not need this kind of trouble. Don't do it again. No ticket. It was great. He was a simply unstoppable force. He loved to play. His later life, he became a real beardy Santa. He just did it for free because it was fun. At his memorial, my nephew told a story that really summed up how he was. He's, my nephew said he felt like he was like the little dog running around the big dog and you know what needs done, the, the tractor starter's not working. So my dad said, Cameron, go get that starter off. Cameron got the starter off. Hands it to my dad. He goes in. He's looking on the computer trying to find out how much a new starter is. He comes back out and here's my dad with the old starter and a mousetrap. He took the little spring off the mousetrap, got it stuck on there. And 10 years later, tractor is still running, didn't even need a new starter. He just fixed it that way. Ever the clever one, he had a total of 13 patents to his name, 10 individually, three through companies. And he just, you know, basically taught us that we could be, do, or have anything we wanted if we just set our mind to it. And it was easy to believe because he was living proof. He lived his life to the fullest. He took full advantage of that fine line on both sides of it and had no regrets. Dad, thank you.